Making a stool is a great project for the CNC and Fusion 360. Here is a three-piece stool that fits together with symmetrical pieces and has a clean top on the surface because it only goes in halfway. We're going to make this stool with Fusion 360 and add dog bones for easy assembly. We want this stool to be mostly parametric, meaning we can change parameters and then it'll update automatically. To do that, we'll go to the Modify Change Parameters. We'll set up some user parameters. The first user parameter we're going to set up is Ply. This will be the thickness of the material, and we'll call this 19.05, which is approximately 3 quarters of an inch. We'll make another user parameter. We'll call this Seat Height. And for this, we'll call it 457 millimeters, which is approximately 18 inches. Next, we need Seat Diameter. And for Seat Diameter, we'll type 355 which is approximately 14 inches. We also want leg width. This will be the width of the legs that we're making. And for this, we'll type 100 millimeters. Next, we want foot width. Foot width is how far apart the outside edges of the legs are. And for this, we're going to make an equation. So we're going to say seat diameter times 0.625. So this is half of the seat diameter plus another eighth. Say OK. And then finally, we're going to make bit. Bit is the router bit we're going to use to cut this out. We'll put this in inches at 0.25. Now that we have these user parameters, we're ready to get started working. The first thing we want to do is create a component. This component will be seat, and then we want to create a construction plane referencing the ground plane of the origin. We want to go up seat height. This will create a construction plane way up in the air. On top of this construction plane, we can create a sketch. Then we can grab the polygon tool. We want to get an inscribed polygon. Click on the origin, drag out, and then type seat diameter divided by two. Now we need to make sure that we have this polygon rotated correctly. So click the horizontal vertical constraint, and then click the top line. Now we have everything locked in place. Finish the sketch and then extrude. Because we want the seat height to be the top of this, we're going to type negative ply. And we can say OK. Now we have our seat. If we want to, we can give this a fillet on the edges. So I'll click the edges here to make it less sharp. And we'll give this a fillet of 25 millimeters. Now I'll make a new component. And this component will be leg one. Once leg one is activated, we'll create a sketch. And this time we're going to create a sketch on one of the walls. So this one is fine. We want to project the existing geometry in. Make sure you have the selection filter of bodies selected, then click the body. So now we have this geometry to reference. Let's get the line tool and we'll start drawing in our stool. So I'm going to intentionally click off this line here in the middle to make sure that we fully constrain our sketch the way we want to. So I'm going to draw down, then over, then down at an angle, then over, up at an angle. So these are all the lines we need, but we need to make them a little bit easier to use. I've drawn these intentionally crooked so we can see how we can constrain them with constraints. I'll click the vertical horizontal constraint here, the same here. We have perpendiculars, so this should already be fully constrained. We'll make sure that this is horizontal vertical. Then we'll start making some of these collinear. So we can make this line collinear with the origin. So now we're on the ground. We can make this line collinear with the bottom of the seat. This one we want to have coincident with the origin. So now it'll always be locked in the origin. We also want to make this one a construction line. Next, we need to start giving some dimensions. This dimension we know, this will be half of ply. We can type ply divided by two. This dimension will be seat diameter divided by four. And then this dimension will be seat diameter divided by eight. We probably want these two lines to be parallel, so we'll add a parallel constraint. So now those are parallel. We have leg width as a user parameter, so we'll type leg width. Remember, we also have foot width. That's how far this foot point is from the origin, so we'll go ahead and add that. Foot width. 
that kicks it out a little bit to give the stool some stability. Now we just need to define how tall this is. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll dimension it from the origin. And we'll say seat height minus ply. So we're only dealing with the part that's under the seat. And then we'll times it by 0.75. So now it's a quarter of the way down of the remaining height underneath the seat. We have to draw one more line. We have this purple projection line here, but we actually need a sketch line. So grab your sketch tool, click from here to here, and now we have a line here that's part of our sketch. We have a fully constrained sketch. You can double check that by looking over here at your sketches. Yes, we have the red padlock, but we only have half a leg. So go ahead and click on the mirror command. We'll select each of the pieces that we want to mirror. Then we'll select our mirror line, the center line here, and we'll say OK. And then we'll finish the sketch. Now we have a sketch right in the middle of our seat. Let's get the extrude command. And we don't want to go one side, we want to go symmetric. And if we're extruding on both sides, that means we want to go ply divided by two. And now we have a new body. But you notice that we missed our tab. So if that happens, go ahead and edit your feature. Then make sure you select all the pieces that you want. Now we're gonna now we'll activate the top level component, create a new component, call this leg two. We'll create a sketch right on top of leg one. Let's hide the seat for now. Press project, grab all of the geometry of leg one, and now we're gonna create a sketch right on this. So let's draw a line from the midpoint down to the midpoint. Let's make this a construction line. Select the line, click construction. Now grab a rectangle. I'm intentionally drawing this rectangle out of place so you can see how the constraints work. We want this to be collinear with the bottom. So click this line and this line. We want the dimensions to be ply. And then we want the midpoint of this line and this line to be together. So now it's centered, everything is finished. We can go ahead and extrude this object. And we want to go negative ply because we're already on the edge of this leg. So negative ply, press OK. Then on leg two, we want to right click and move copy. The origin should be in the middle here. Rotate it 90 degrees, then press OK. Now we can activate the top level component. And you can see we have our legs intersecting. So let's do a combine action. We'll click combine, capture the position. The target body will be leg one. And then the tool body will be leg two. We'll do cut and we want to keep the tools. So you can see what's going to happen there. We'll say OK. So now if I hide leg two, leg one has that perfect cut. So let's show the seat again. And now we want to subtract these legs out of the seat. So let's do combine. The target body will be the seat. The tool bodies will be the two legs. We can see what's going to happen. And then we'll say, OK. If I hide the legs now and we look at the bottom of the seat, we have this nice cutout here. Now it's time to lay this out in our manufacturer workspace. But before we do that, we want to make a virtual manufacturing setup. So let's create a new component. We'll call this CNC. Inside CNC, we'll create a new component. We'll call this plywood. Now we'll create a sketch on the ground plane. Let's draw a rectangle. And for this rectangle, I know that I have a 48 inch by a 48 inch piece of plywood. I want to give it some dimensions from the origin. So let's get our dimension tool. I'll give this 500. And then from here to here, we'll give it 24 inches. So now our plywood is centered right there. Finish the sketch. Let's extrude this. We'll say ply. So now we have a virtual piece of plywood. Now let's go ahead and activate the CNC component. Shift click all of your components. Right click copy. Then right click on CNC and paste. You'll see that we can move them to the side. Go ahead and do that. Press OK. Now what we want to do is hide the original component so we don't get confused. So just click the eyeballs. 
and then we can create joints. But before we create joints, we want to right click on plywood and ground it. What this does is it just makes it so it doesn't move around with our other joints. So to make it easier to select, I've hidden the legs. Click joint. Then the top part of the seat on the plywood. Notice that because I selected the top part, it flipped it upside down. This is good because we want to be able to cut out those pocket holes. Then you can go ahead and position. And right now I have the motion as rigid. This is fine if you know exactly where you want to put it. If you want more uh, ability to change the position later, you can click planar as this little animation. We can press OK, but what that allows us to do is move the position later. So let's do the next leg. We'll go ahead and create a joint. Select anywhere on the piece. Then here, it'll flip it down and it's automatically planar. We'll press OK, and then we'll do one more joint. So we'll show this leg, click Joint, click on the face of the component, then on the face of this, and lay it down. We'll press OK. So now I'm gonna show you how you can move these planar joints around. Let's look at the top. Select whatever piece you want, for example, the seat, then press M. Because it's a planar joint, it'll always stay in plane, and so we can move it to where we want. Press OK, then select the next piece, press M, and we can move it around, we can rotate it. Press OK, and then select the last piece, press M. Once again, we can rotate it around, and move it, and figure out whatever nesting we want. The only issue with this method of using planar joints and then moving them we need to make sure that we capture the position, otherwise Fusion will forget. So we capture the position. We can show our original piece if we want. So there's the original piece. And now what we need to do is just add some dog bones so this will work with our CNC. Here I have the dog bone fillet tool already installed as an add-in. If you want to know how to install this, you can see a link in the description. And one nice thing to do is to just do it per component. So even though it's more work, we have more pieces at the end. So then I can type bit, that's our user parameter, and press OK. And now you can see it's added these perfect dog bone fillets right on that piece. We'll do it one more time, and this time we'll see if it will work with just clicking this edge. And then our tool diameter will be bit, and now it's created all the dog bones. And this is, um, this is great, we have a dog bone here, but probably for this, I would not have a dog bone there and just get, take the natural curve of the tool path or add a fillet to that piece. So if that happens to you, you can just press Command Z and then redo the dog bone tool by manually selecting the pieces that you want to have dog boned. In this case, we want this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. We can do the same thing and say bit. And we'll say OK. So now it only has the dog bones on that piece. So sometimes selecting all of the edges is good, and sometimes doing it manually is good. So for the last piece, we'll select this edge, this edge, and then these two top edges. And then once again, we will type bit and say OK. So now we have all the dog bones on our piece and we're ready to move into the manufacturer workspace. In the manufacturer workspace, we can set up our new uh, tool paths for CNC, and you can do this based on the CNC of your choice.